the night that Judas betrayed Jesus, and the soldiers came to arrest him. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 55, it says, In that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out as a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all of this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now all of Jesus' life, he had had people around him. He had people that loved him, that thought highly of him, that believed in him. But at this particular point, Jesus was alone. He was by himself with no one that cared for him. No one that consoled him. Because he was led away as a thief and put into prison. And if you know anything about being alone, you know how Jesus felt. But at that point, those that captured Jesus led him the next morning to Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the high priest, and there were with him disciples of scribes, elders, and they were all gathered together. And their chief priest and council kept trying to get Jesus to talk. They wanted to gather information to get him to speak so they could uh, find him guilty of something that they could put him to death. They kept, they couldn't find anything. They, they questioned him, they bombarded him, but they could find nothing that would warrant his death. So many false witnesses came forward, they still found nothing. But then there was those two that came. And they said, we heard him say that he could destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. So at that point, they had figured out that they were going to accuse him of blasphemy. And they had what they needed to take him to Pilate. So they took Jesus to Pilate and they began to accuse him again. And say, we found this man misleading the nation. He was refusing to pay taxes and just all kinds of corruption, uh, not corruption, but the uh, confusion that he's created. And uh, at that time, they said that he was, you know, saying that he was the king, the Christ, Christ the king. And at that time, Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, thou sayest. When Pilate heard that, he was teaching all around Judea and, and Galilee. Uh, Pilate began to wonder whether he was a Galilean or not. So when he found out that he was, he realized that he was in Herod's jurisdiction. So he said, well, Herod's close today at the feast. So I'll just send him over to Herod and he can, uh, he can deal with it. So he sent him around to Herod. And uh, Herod was glad to see him. Jesus had been on, uh, Herod had been wanting to see Jesus for a long time. Uh, he was waiting to see him because he wanted to see one of these signs or miracles that everybody was talking about and how, you know, he was doing things. And, and uh, that's the only reason that he wanted to see him. So they questioned him. They asked him, and he said nothing. He just remained silent. Even, even though the soldiers and Herod mistreated him, treated him with contempt, mocked him, spit in his face, they blindfolded him and they slapped him and they said, Prophesy that man of God. Who hit you? He said nothing. He remained quiet. So they sent him back to Pilate. I'm giving a little information on Pilate, the best I can find. <laughs> Pilate's date of birth is not known. He is believed to have hailed from the Samian region of central Italy. He served as the prefect of Judea until 36 AD. He convicted Jesus of treason and declared that Jesus thought himself king of the Jews. And had Jesus crucified, 
<coughs> How it died in 39 AD. Nobody knows what it died. They're still good. But in 1961, they found an artifact that had Pontius Pilate's name on it. So they know that he was a real person in the Bible. And I think that God has revealed to us for long and long things that people say, well, you know, there's no proof of it. But God's revealing those things to us. You know, we're finding those things. But anyway, uh, when Pilate was appointed as a Roman prefect, he was granted the power of the Supreme Judge, which meant that he had sole authority over a criminal execution. His duties as prefect included such mundane tasks as tax collection and managing construction projects, but perhaps the most crucial responsibility was that of maintaining law and order. And Pilate, if he <coughs> negotiated, he accomplished it through brute force. And as governor of Judea, he faced a conflict of interest between the Roman Empire and the Sanhedrin Jewish Council. Pilate claims that Jesus embraced the title of King of the Jews. The accusation was considered, by, for, considered treason by the Roman government. According to some sources, Pilate collaborated with the Jewish leaders in prosecuting Jesus. Jewish leaders viewed Jesus as claiming the power of a political threat. In the Gospel accounts of the trial of Jesus, Pilate was described as a cruel and unfair man. And all four of the Gospels describe him as weak and giving in to the Jewish authorities pressure on him to execute Jesus. The Gospels indicate in the decision that he conceded to letting Jesus go at one stage of the trial. But then he rescinded that all. He said no. And I'm not going to read on the pulpit. And if you put up chapter 27 now, we're going to go, we're going to, go to Matthew 27. And we're going to start looking at verses 12 through four, uh, 24. And Jeffrey, I'm speaking straight out of King James tonight. So if you didn't bring the King James, shame on you. <laughs> okay, in verse 12, it says, And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. 13. Then said Pilate unto, Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against you? In other words, are you not listening? Don't you hear what these people are saying? Don't you know that they are accusing you wrongly? I, I mean, don't you hear what they're saying? Speak up for yourself. Speak up. And he answered them with a word. And so much that the governor, who was Pilate at the time, he marveled greatly. But Jesus kept silent, just as, in Isaiah, just as Isaiah predicted. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, and it says, He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before his shearers, so he did not open his mouth. So it was predicted that this was all coming. So Pilate, Pilate marveled at Jesus' ability to remain calm during the meetings and, and the, the uh, accusations and, and the mistreatment. Uh, he, just, he just couldn't get over Jesus being that calm. But I believe that Pilate was actually frustrated because he was a powerful man, very powerful. He had the power of life and death in his hands. It was given to him when he became the, Roman, the emperor at the Roman Prefect. Uh, so he had the power. He could say life or death. Life or death. He had that power in his hands. And most of the time, at this time in a trial, the prisoners would be, they would be squirming. They would be frustrated. They would be begging Pilate to have mercy on them. So, and they would bow down with fear and submission, hoping that Pilate would have mercy. But this was not the case with Jesus. Jesus remained quiet. And this made Pilate very, very uneasy at that particular time. Verse 15, Now the feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. 16, And they had a note for the called Barabbas. Barabbas was uh, guilty of insurrection, murder. 
who knows what, but his crimes were worthy of, of justice, of being crucified on the cross. His crimes justified that. But they, therefore, when they were gathered together, well, therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto him, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Pilate knew that for envy they had delivered him unto him just because they didn't like what he was doing. It was taking uh, the light off of them and the light was on Jesus. In verse 19, when he, Pilate, sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Now, I don't know about the guys that are here, but if it were me and my wife had told me something like that, uh, I might give what I'm doing a second look and maybe say, okay, honey, you're right. Because uh, we, we don't know uh, what happened at that time. We can only hope that Jesus forgives us. Power on earth is loving and his ability to, to draw people and to touch people. That he touched Pilate's wife's heart and he saw it. And she realized that he was the Christ. And he was here to save all that believed that his death would be the Savior. But she was wanting him to understand that he's not guilty. He's not guilty. In verse 20, but the chief priest and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas to destroy Jesus. Ask Barabbas to destroy Jesus. They didn't want Jesus around. He was able to draw people to them that they couldn't draw to themselves, not by force, not by law, not by decree. They couldn't get them to do the things with them that people were doing with Jesus and following him. But in verse 21, the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain were ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Can you imagine? as the statement was made about the release of Barabbas, how those crowds that were trying to get Jesus crucified, how, how loud the noise became, how, how wild it grew and extremely loud. And at that point, I think that Pilate knew, even though he felt maybe, just maybe, it might be possible that Jesus is innocent. It might be possible. But he could not go against the crowd for fear of losing his time in that government. Verse 22, Pilate says unto them, What shall I do then? But Jesus calls it, which is called Christ. They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor, being Pilate, asked, Why? Why? What evil has he done? Why? What evil had he done? So, some looks say that Pilate was <laughs> this way. They, he, he didn't really want to deal with the situation what it was. But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. They didn't care whether he was in Christ, who he was, where he came from. He was taking the spotlight away from them, and that morning, God wanted to matter what they had to do, or whether he was innocent or guilty, they just wanted him gone. So when, he, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult, riot, whether you want to call it some Bible say, my, I think mine says a riot, uh, my NIV brother says a, a riot, was made, he took water out of a bowl. And he washed his hands. And he said, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See to it. So he's saying, I am innocent. I have washed my hands. Crucify him if you will, but I am innocent. Now I can almost see 
that slow look on Pilate's face as he turned and walked away feeling good about himself inside because he had preserved statute among his people and, and allowed Jesus to be crucified and being able to use a custom to purify himself and declare innocence of what his duties were. Now I can also see him as the days pass and he plays that historical day over and over in his mind. He thinks about it the next day. He said, I'm not sick. You know, I, I, I wash my hands. I, I'm not guilty. And the days go by, two, three days. That must have played on his mind really hard when they came and told him that Jesus was no longer in the tomb and the stories and the sightings and the facts proved that Jesus Christ had risen. I'm innocent. I washed my hands. I am innocent. I am innocent. Do we sometimes in certain situations get caught up in and, and, and things like that? The pressure of the crowd, the way that, that the world's going. To <laughs> uh, the point that we do not follow uh, what we know is right in the eyes of Jesus. Do we do that? Do we not defend his name when someone else is calling out, crucifying him? When we back away from a discussion as to whether Christ is real or he was invented by some group of men that were taking hallucinogenic drugs and they dreamed up this whole thing all through the Bible, Jesus, everything, all the way to the end, that, that it's written by a bunch of crazy people. Do, do, do you step in and do you defend it? Do you back Jesus up? Or do you back away? Wash your hands and say, I'm innocent of that. We're all guilty of the blood of that innocent person we call Jesus. When we sin, we add weight to the hammer, we add dullness to the spikes, and we add pain to Jesus Christ as he died on that cross. Every sin we commit. We are driving those nails, those dull nails, and a heavy hammer because Jesus died on that cross to save us from our sins. And every time we sin, we're helping to crucify him all over again. Let's don't fool ourselves as Pilate did. Let's don't think that because we're not actually involved or participating in the actual event that we can wash our hands and declare that we're innocent. When you walk through those doors on Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Wednesday, there's no automatic sin wash. It doesn't cleanse you from the sins that you've committed all week long before you come in. When you come in and sit down on the pew, you're, you're not cleansed of your sins. <coughs> we cannot cleanse ourselves with the mere act of plain water. We must be cleansed by being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and saved us from our sins. He was slain for our wrongdoing. With water we can only cleanse the outer body, but the blood of the Lamb will cleanse our hearts and wash away our sins first. The pastor's going to come down and we're going to have our benediction. Uh, I think tomorrow we're going to sing and we're going to try to help him. So if you uh, if you feel like it, sometimes you're uh, indecisive about what to do, uh, stand up for you. Do, do what Pilate didn't do, and he should have done. Because he knew he had the power of life and death, and that he could, he could have saved you. But because of not wanting to get involved, and not losing his standing with the crowd, he let Jesus be crucified. Thank <laughs> you.